Welcome to Airbus. Welcome to the We Make It Fly Airbus podcast. In this series, we're focusing all that matters in space, defense, and security. I'm Alvaro Beteta, and in this episode, we're going to hear about the A400M from John Taylor, Airbus test pilot working on the aircraft. Hello, John. Hi. Hi, Alvaro. John, just to start off with, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, certainly. So I'm currently based down in uh, San Pablo in Seville in Spain with Airbus Defence and Space as one of their experimental test pilots on the A400M. From a background, I'm from a predominantly military background in the Royal Air Force in the UK, having spent 18 years with the Royal Air Force, uh, about 10 years as a uh, Special Forces uh, support pilot on the C-130, and then followed by a test pilot's course in 2011. I went off to Toulouse on behalf of the Royal Air Force to act as a customer authority pilot on the A400M, in many ways checking Airbus's work at that time from the, from the customer side. Then in 2014, I left the Royal Air Force and switched across to British Airways on the 787, doing normal commercial operations from Heathrow in London. And then in 2016, I hopped across to Airbus Defence and Space down in Seville on the A400M, uh, which is where I currently am. Wow, well, that's a, a rich flying experience. With all that experience, can you tell us a little bit uh, what it's like to fly the A400M? Yeah, certainly. From a pilot's point of view, it, it's great. I mean, uh, as a pilot, any time you get to, uh, a new aircraft to uh, fly or, or, or play in, as many people think, it, it's really enjoyable. But the A400M is, is special in many ways just because it's, it's such a big aircraft. I mean, it's 140 tonnes worth of aircraft, and yet uh, it flies and it has an agility as though it was more a small, fast jet aircraft. Coupled to that, it has a lot of performance, uh, and with its flight control system, which is one of sort of Airbus's uh, famed areas of uh, technology, it just makes it so easy. I mean, I shouldn't really say it, but my, you know, my six-year-old daughter could probably fly the A400M quite comfortably. It's very much a uh, point in the aircraft where you want to go and, and off it goes. So no, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's a real privilege to be able to fly the uh, A400M. It does sound uh, pretty amazing. And what makes the A400M special and different to other aircraft? Is there anything special yet to come? Yeah, I mean, I think the A400M, is, it's special in its own right and it's hopefully going to get more special is a good way of putting it. You know, some aircraft are, are very good at what they do, but they're almost just doing one thing, whether it's a, an airliner or, or even some fast jets. You know, they're good at one one task. Uh, the A400M is is just full of capability, has a raft of capabilities for the military customer. And that's, that's what makes it such a special aircraft. You know, it has to be able to do a number of different things. I think the listeners are probably familiar with the majority of its baseline capabilities of logistic load moving, um, natural surface runways, etc. But some of the things that are coming on right now and, and what we're working on right now, are, I mean, I'll give you a quick sample. So, so we have low level flying. The A400M will have a unique system of managed low level flying. So at the moment, it's able to do that in uh, visual conditions. So, so from a pilot's point of view, you're at 500 feet. The aircraft is following the terrain using a database. Uh, and as a pilot, you're sat there with the autopilot in and the auto thrust in, uh, really looking out of the window. And so the aircraft is managing all that for you, allowing you to do other parts of your job. Moving forward, we're going to have that capability, but it'll be able to do that in cloud, in fog. So, you know, with no visibility, this aircraft will simply be using terrain data to fly you around in order to get you to where you need to go at low level. On top of that, we have a simultaneous airdrop, so paratrooping from either door um, with a large number of troops. From a military point of view, force projection, the ability to put a lot of troops uh, onto a drop zone into a foreign country or, you know, into a country. Is, is a really good capability and we've been working hard on that and it makes the aircraft unique in, the, in terms of the amount of people you can get onto that drop zone. And then air-to-air refueling. So we started with a fixed-wing air-to-air refueling where you know we're refueling Eurofighters, Tornadoes uh, and now we're working uh, very hard on the helicopter air-to-air refueling um, which is a real challenge because 
you know, for such a big aircraft, we're having to fly very slow in order to make contact with, uh, for the helicopter to make contact with us. But, I mean, it'll be a fantastic capability. I mean, the A400M carries a lot of fuel, uh, which means you can refuel a lot of helicopters and go a long way. So, again, from a military customer point of view, that, that will be a really special capability, I think, Alvaro, going forward. Wow, thank you. That uh, certainly sounds like there's plenty still to come. In recent times, we've seen a lot of the A400M conducting some very important missions for our customers, uh, especially in response to the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Can you tell us a little bit of how our customers have been using the aircraft? Yeah, certainly. I mean, as a pilot, test pilot down in Airbus, it's a real pleasure to see the customer using the aircraft. And it's interesting with this pandemic that uh, where other options to governments, customer governments, aren't there anymore, like civil charter, you know, they are able to then use the A400M as a government asset in a bunch of different roles, whether it is logistic, medevac, repatriation. And looking at our different customers, they've all been using the aircraft in, in similar similar ways. And what's really impressive in some ways is when you look in the back of a German aircraft or a UK aircraft, you know, with the medevac capability, it's like seeing in the back of a, you know, seeing a hospital in the back of an aircraft. And that's allowed them to repatriate some medically ill uh, uh, nationals from you know far away places using the reach of the A400M and bringing them back safely in in what in essence is an intensive care unit in the back of an aircraft. Likewise, you know other customers have used the aircraft in a more logistic role, you know bringing personal protection equipment from around the globe to their countries or within to Europe to then be further uh, distributed amongst uh, European governments. Uh, and likewise, you know we look at the French Air Force. You know they've been all the way out to Tahiti in terms of repatriating people um, and bringing aid and supplies. So, you know, from my point of view, it, it's a real testament to the aircraft that it's been able to be involved in what has been a, well, a global emergency. Uh, and it's played its role. You know, I've been fortunate enough uh, on the Airbus side to be involved in, in some of those missions. And so it's, it's a great privilege for me, you know, to be involved in bringing personal equipment from, uh, it was from China across to Toulouse, Toulouse down to Madrid, uh, to help the uh, Spanish government. Uh, and that's a, it's a real pleasure. But I think the important thing to say here, Alvaro, is that you know, all of this is a huge team effort. You know, I mean, it might be me who's fortunate enough and lucky enough to sit in the front of the aircraft and, uh, uh, and you know, sometimes have fun and the other times do a, a really good uh, job of helping our customers. But it's a team effort within the company. You know, all the different departments of the company go together to give us the A400M uh, and provide the opportunity to, to bring these capabilities. And across Europe, you know, we have government support, customer support. Uh, you know, we do a lot of testing in different countries and it's only because they support us and they allow us to do it. So it's a real team effort. And, and through that, we have a good aircraft, a great aircraft and a great capability. Fantastic. Now, that's a, a wonderful glimpse into the aircraft and indeed into you and the rest of the wider team's background. So it's been a real pleasure talking to you today, John. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Avery. And uh, that concludes this edition of We Make It Fly. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and rate us wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on all social media and use the hashtag WeMakeItFly to get in touch with us. We'd love to get your feedback. Thanks for listening.